So we were talking about some of the volcanic features of the moon. And along the way, I would mentioned that burying uh, a colony or moon base under the surface of the moon would let the lunar uh, surface, the soil, uh, protect it. Well, let's talk about that lunar soil. It's not really called soil. It's called regolith. Uh, now, the difference is that on Earth, soil is you go out and you take a shovel and dig up something on the ground. Uh, what you get is stuff that's partially uh, rock, it's partially mineral, it's partially uh, organic. Pretty much anywhere you go on Earth, you find evidence of organic molecules. Uh, you have things that, that's been weathered, oxidized, all, all kind of, of alterations to the original rock. Now, on the moon, the surface is covered in sort of a fine dust and crushed rock fragments. Now, there is no wind, there is no rain, there is no erosion of that sort on the surface of the moon. So what happens is meteorites, small meteorites, what we call micro meteorites or mini meteorites, little bitty things slamming into the rocks on the surface over time pulverize and grind up the rocks, shatter the rocks, break them into bits. Uh, that leaves this very fine sort of material that we call regolith. Uh, the lunar regolith contained, when they brought back samples from the Apollo missions, there was no organic material at all, and they found uh, no appreciable amounts of water. Now, all, even the most desiccated places on Earth, you find tiny little bits of water in the soil, in the middle of the desert. Uh, not very much, but a tiny bit. And they didn't find that in the regolith they brought back from the moon. Now, we're going to get back to this later, because since then we have found that there actually is a tiny bit of water on the moon, but um, the initial uh, uh, samples brought back by the astronauts had virtually no water at all. All right, so that makes this material on the moon slightly different. Actually, it's more than slightly different, because this moon dust is very fine, ground up by microscopic meteorites over, over eons, and um, unlike dust and sand grains on Earth, which are basically broken down from other rocks and weathered, they're tumbled around, they bounce into you know, the sharp edges, or basically get worn off. Um, on the moon, that doesn't happen, and all this moon dust has unbelievably sharp fine edges. The astronauts found it was very annoying because it would get into the spacesuit and you couldn't just brush it off because it would, the little jagged edges would, when you try to brush it off, would just gouge into the spacesuit itself and embed itself into the material. Uh, it got everywhere. You couldn't get rid of it and um, you couldn't blow it off, obviously, because there's no air to blow it off. And uh, so it, it got into the, the capsule itself when they got, you know, when they tried to uh, take off again, it got into the ascent stage, it got all over the place. Uh, no matter how much they tried to control it, it got places. Since then, they've actually discovered that these little tiny sharp edges caused it to, when it got inhaled, to basically lodge in the uh, lungs of the astronauts. Very much similar kind of thing to the way asbestos does. And so uh, in future missions to the moon, containing and controlling the moon dust is a major deal because they want to know, well, how do we, how do we try to you know, deal with this so that it doesn't get in the way of stuff. Because this was the other problem, that it would get all over the place and they had even trouble sealing the hatches of the spacecraft so that it didn't leak. And so, so th this, this is one of the, the issues that they are considering in terms of going back to the moon, is how do you handle all this lunar rest? The other problem is that the astronauts recorded that it was almost sometimes like a faint fog, you know, hovering, you know, a couple feet around on the surface. So, so walking around the moon was almost like walking in a fog, except we, we, we know there wasn't any fog there. What was happening was that charged particles from the sun, solar wind particles, were actually hitting the surface of the moon and the, it was like static electricity building up on these, these uh, moon dust particles, and they were repelling each other. And so they were actually floating uh, slightly over the surface uh, a couple of feet deep. 
And so that made, almost made like a weak ionosphere on the surface of the moon, just like a couple of feet off the surface. Uh, but this, again, it becomes an issue in terms of a later mission to the moon, because that means that, you know, you don't have to actually physically disturb the dust for it to start floating up and on top of everything. And so, uh, again, it's how do you deal with this? And so how do, how do you, how do you uh, protect from this sort of thing? The astronauts did bring back some rocks. The, the a couple uh, or the few of the Luna spacecraft also sent back rocks. Um, the rocks that we found on the moon uh, are, for the most part, recognizable as Earth-type rocks. We have basalt-type rocks on the moon uh, from the seas. This is kind of what we expect uh, uh, if this is upper mantle type material. Uh, some of the basalts are vesicular basalts. That is, they have uh, vesicles or little bubbles in them from volcanic gases trapped on the interior of the moon, you know, coming out in solution. We find this on Earth too. Uh, this gives stuff like scoria or pumice on Earth. Uh, pumice if it's a, a granitic type rock and scoria if it's, if it's a basaltic type rock. Uh, breccias, again, we talked about breccias. This is a type of sedimentary rock in which you take fragments of other rocks, squeeze them together, and they stick together. And we found breccias on the moon. Uh, we also found a northocytes. A northocytes are in the granite family. That This was the kind of rock we found in the highland material on the moon. And so uh, uh, so that, that was also something we found. Um, so most of the rocks that we found were recognizable as rocks or uh, that looked similar to rocks that we find here on Earth. Um, that, that means that we, we, we can categorize them in the same sort of fashion. In fact, this was actually a very interesting sort of thing. When they started looking at the minerals on the moon, they were expecting, well, this is an entirely different world, so we're going to have all these brand new minerals. And what they found was that they found a whole bunch of pretty familiar minerals on the moon. Now, there were a few minerals on the moon that were not found in earth rocks. Mainly, they were minerals that degrade in the presence of oxygen. So that, that means they oxidize, which means on earth, which has oxygen in the environment, that those kind of minerals are not stable. They would actually tend to, to change into something else. Uh, yet on the moon, because there's no oxygen, uh, they were stable. And so those are the main types of minerals that we found on the moon, which were not available on Earth. Basically things that degrade in Earth's atmosphere. That would suggest, in fact, maybe Earth has these things. And there is evidence that Earth does have minerals that are very rare, that are very temporary, that sometimes you'll have a rock that forms a volcanic rock and it forms minerals that only last for days, weeks, or just just months or even just a few years before it's degraded. So there, there, are, there is evidence that, that Earth does have some of these types of minerals, and we're still finding new minerals on Earth, uh, by the way, uh, sometimes in these really fresh volcanic rocks, uh, minerals that don't last because of the atmosphere degrading it. So the moon would have these things, and they would stay around for a very long time because there's no atmosphere. Basalts, though, uh, turned out to be somewhat, while they were, they were recognizable, they did have some different kinds of uh, proportions of things in them, of, of elements. Uh, the basalts on the moon, uh, particularly the ones that are in the uh, seas, we call creep basalts. Uh, K for potassium, uh, P for phosphorus, and the REE -E is for rare earth elements. The rare earth elements, uh, uh, they're, they're, they, these are elements in the middle of the periodic table. They're pretty rare on earth, hence rare earth elements. Uh, but we find that they're fairly common in asteroids, and they are also fairly common in these basalts on the surface of the moon. Now that's really interesting because a lot of these rare earth elements are absolutely vital to uh, modern technological society. Uh, you find them in computer chips, uh, for example. And so all, all electronic devices basically need these rare earth elements in order to operate, and they are very rare on Earth. Uh, so uh, that, that 
that means that there is potentially a market to mine the moon. Um, I can just imagine them strip mining the moon because that would be the easiest way of doing it. Uh, there, there are, you know, international conventions and so forth here and talk about, you know, how, how, how do you use the resources in space um, and, and so forth. But there's, there's really, this is, this is an untried area of law. And so we don't really know how this would all work. Uh, so, um, so it is actually something that is of, of interest among various scientists uh, as to, to how do you establish rules for doing this sort of thing so that you maintain the, the environment, uh, you know, such as it is. The rocks on the moon. When they brought back the rocks, the, the typical rocks they found were ancient. The, 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 the youngest rocks the astronauts brought back were older than the oldest rocks on Earth. Well, that means that the moon is essentially a dead world. That means that Earth is constantly resurfacing itself, volcanic activity, erosion, making new rocks, sedimentary rocks, uh, making new igneous rocks, destroying old rocks, weathering them, subducting them. The moon's doing none of that, and so these rocks just sit there. Uh, the moon rocks, you know, they, they didn't really have a whole lot of brand new minerals, um, but they were very poor in what we call volatile minerals. So the only minerals the moon rocks had that were new were things that don't survive in an oxygen environment, but they were missing a number of minerals. They were missing a bunch of minerals that are volatile. Volatile means they dissipate or they go away at high temperatures. The moon had more percentage-wise refractory minerals. Refractory minerals are things that survive high temperature. This suggests that the moon rocks, every moon rock we brought back, uh, was subjected to very high temperature in the past. There was almost no water in the rocks we brought back. That means that the, uh, the uh, moon is, is fairly desiccated compared to Earth. And the rocks were completely devoid of any organic material. So uh, the, the moon has no life. The moon had no life. Uh, all the precautions they took for the first couple of missions with the biocontainment, you know, sort of protocols and the isolation protocols and quarantine turned out that we didn't need to do that because the moon did not have any organisms living on it. Now, they did not know that ahead of time, so, you know, I, I would not, not say this was a, a bad move on their part to be cautious. The moon rocks had the same isotope ratio as earth rocks. Now, what does that mean? At different locations in the solar system, you have different isotope ratios. The moon rocks can, are consistent with earth rocks, meaning that the moon formed one AU from the sun, just like earth did. You know, there are indications that, that the isotope ratios are slightly different on other planets, and this is one way of differentiating, like, for example, a Mars rock from an Earth rock, uh, because the isotopes are just ever so slightly different. And so the, the, the propylate acted like a giant centrifuge, uh, separating out isotopes at different distances. So this, this tells us something about the moon. Uh, because again, uh, this this was this this raised questions as to where does the moon come from, which we'll be getting to. So this is actually a, a, a concentration comparison of of earth rocks, uh, lowland rocks. That's the seas and the highland rocks. And you see that in most cases, the proportions of the various uh, minerals is pretty much similar. Uh, there are more, there is more titanium, magnesium, and iron in the lunar basalts than we typically find on Earth, okay, and definitely in the lunar highlands. Uh, um, um, the Earth has a little bit more silicon um, and oxygen than the moon. Uh, Earth has a lot more sodium than the moon. Uh, um, um, so, uh, so we, we do have, have this, this sort of uh, differences that are there.